if we had an aeroplane uh, flying at a certain velocity in a certain direction, um, then there's certain things we might want to find out about that. Perhaps how far north it goes each second or how far to the east. And we can do this by resolving vectors. So it could be maybe resolving the velocity into its um, x and y components. It could be looking at a force in the vertical and horizontal plane. Uh, and this is one of the ways that you can do it. We have a hurricane and perhaps its velocity may be 50 metres per second uh, at a certain angle. Now, if we think about angles for definitely for, for velocities and things, we might consider this in terms of some kind of datum. So we might think about the north, east, south and west. So the plane isn't flying directly north or east, but every second it goes a little bit further north and a little bit further east. And perhaps we know that uh, it's on a bearing of 0, 060 0, or 60 degrees from north. Well, what we can do is we can resolve this into how much further east it goes every second and how much further north. And we can do this by uh, using a straightforward bit of Sokotoa. So this angle here between uh, north and the, the velocity vector is 60 degrees, then this angle in here must be 30 degrees. And what we can then do is start to see how this triangle relates to um, just a normal right angle triangle. So what we have here is a hypotenuse, the longest side. We have the side opposite to the angle, and we also have the side adjacent to the angle. And effectively what we do know is we know theta, and we know the hypotenuse. And initially I'd like to work out the length of this adjacent side. Now I can do that using cos. So we can say that cos theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. But we want to know the adjacent side, so I can say that the adjacent side is equal to h cos theta. Now the length of that is going to be equal to 50 times cos 30. And if I put the numbers into a calculator, what I find is that the adjacent side is equal to 43.3 and the units for that are going to be metres per second because they're the units for this vector here. So that means in one second it goes another 43.3 metres to the right. If I do the same uh, looking at the length of this side up here, we've got the opposite side and I know that by using sine theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. I can rearrange that to make the opposite side the subject. So the length of that side is going to be equal to h sine theta. So the distance it goes vertically or the distance it goes to the north every second is going to be equal to 50 sine 30 and sine 30 is just a half. So it goes 25 metres further north every second. Summing that up, although it's got a velocity of 50 metres per second, I've resolved into its easterly and northerly components. Every second that plane goes 50 metres, but it goes a further 43.3 metres east, and it goes another 25 metres north. Uh, and that means its uh, horizontal velocity is 43.3 metres per second, Sorry, it's easterly velocity and it's northerly velocity is 25 metres per second. You can do exactly the same thing with force acting at an angle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about a force acting at some angle and we can split it or resolve it into both the horizontal or the x component of force and also the vertical component. Now let's just uh, use some notation rather than numbers. Perhaps the force is a size f and it's acting at an angle theta to the horizontal. And for convenience, I'm going to say that this is the x plane, and that's the y plane, a bit like on your graph, or we could have said that that's the horizontal and the vertical distance. Now, thinking again back to our triangle, we have our hypotenuse, the opposite side, and the adjacent side. If I want to find the size of this force acting in this direction, we can say that um, because we're using the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, we're going to use cos. We can say that this force in the x direction, fx, is going to be equal to the force times cos theta. The force in the y plane, fy, because we're using the opposite side and the hypotenuse in this angle here, theta, fy, is going to be equal to f sine theta. Now there's no easy way to do vectors, some people it just clicks and you get it automatically, 
other people, if you're not that strong at maths, it's going to take a lot of work to get on with. And sometimes you have to work through maybe 10, 20, 50, you know, a huge amount of problems, and then suddenly it will click. You can then see how each of these vectors can be resolved into its vertical and horizontal components.